50, 60 years ago, crepe myrtles were grown everywhere. Since then, especially with the work from Don Eagle, they've hybridized some of the newer crepe myrtles to make them hardier, so they live in some of the colder climates better. But they've also hybridized them to have good fall color and good summer foliage color. In addition to that, some of the hybridizing has allowed for them to bloom for at least 110 days. Now remember, crepe myrtles love the heat. The hotter it is, the better they're gonna perform. So if you have a cool, wet summer, they may not do as well for you. Now there are about seven different classifications of crepe myrtle according to height. There are some varieties that only get 18 inches tall. They never get any bigger than that. And then they have a group that's like two to three feet tall. Then they've got a group three to maybe five feet tall. Then they got five to maybe 10 or 11 feet tall. Then they've got 11 to 15 feet, 15 to 25 feet, all the way up to 60 feet in height. Now, preferably for my garden and my tastes, I like crepe myrtles that aren't so big because if the crepe myrtle is really big and tall, it's hard for you to see the flowers. And that's why one of my favorites here is Hopi. And it'll get a little bigger than this. It might get twice the height, but you can keep it short by pruning it. But Hopi is a fantastic variety for the garden. If you look behind me, you can see a variety of colors and heights of some of my favorite crepe myrtle. Probably the third one behind me is probably my top favorite between that and Hopi. And that one there is called Sioux, S-I-O-U-X. Fantastic, because you can cut it at any height. You can cut it at five feet, seven feet, 10 feet, 15 feet even 20 feet, and it will come into beautiful flowers at any height you cut it. And then we have Wichita, and then the closer one, the beautiful big white one here, is known as Natchez. Natchez has some of the prettiest exfoliating bark that you can find on any tree. And Natchez is one of the hardier varieties for some of our colder climates. Cold climates, they sometimes have to put them in containers and bring them indoors. And I really like this one. Gets big, 35 feet, and it's known as Miami. See, you have so many crepe myrtles that you can choose from. The one thing to keep in mind is when I prune them, I don't always prune them to the same exact spot every year. Because then during the winter, you get sort of that clubby appearance, just a mass of shoots. So what I do is cut them at different heights sort of to prevent that clubbiness. Now, getting back to Sue, I'm gonna show you a couple of the heights of Sue so you can see how you can use these in your garden. This is Sue, which has been kept short. As I mentioned, it's a very versatile plant at different heights. And what we did is we pruned it at different levels. And so the new shoots that came out produced spuds. The same year I pruned it, I pruned it early in the uh, summer and it's beautiful and it's only about maybe 10 feet tall. The Sioux behind me is 20 years old, 25 feet tall. In fact, my dad said, we should prune it this year. You know, it's getting too big. And I'm saying, no, look how beautiful it is behind me for a 25 foot shrub. Again, one of my top five varieties, plant them in the garden and Sue can take a little bit of bright shade, but mainly full sun, loves the heat. Through some of the breeding and genetic work that was done with crepe myrtles, they found they could improve powdery mildew resistance and improve resistance 
to Japanese beetles. And that's real important because if you look closely at the flowers, you're going to see honeybees. And we really don't want to spray our flowers while honeybees are feeding on the pollen and the nectar. Fantastic variety. This is known as Catawba. Easy to use around the home. Doesn't get too big. Has beautiful foliage. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time in the garden. For more garden tips, go to inthegardenradio.com.